go, guys. Big Hill Jam 2022, Yonkala, Oregon. Home with Josh Hill. The whole Hill family's pulled out all the stops out here. We've got Josh's own personal Jurassic Park out here. Fender Rose, foods out here. Big bikes, dirt bikes, extended chain arms, swing arms. We got it all. It's a f***ing party. All in ass. Billings, Montana. Now, Austin has been in the hill climb sport uh, for about 15 years now. Josh, please explain to me because I don't understand. How are you guys getting over this thing? We're hill climbers. That's what we do. Usually, this is the top of like a 500 foot hill. Yeah, you have a dirt wall. So I thought, hey, bring on the dirt wall to the spectators. And not. We have the 450 side by side. It's going to be close racing coming up this day. this event I didn't really know what to expect the only expectations I put on myself and uh, that was this weekend was to have as much fun as possible with my entire family here just did round one of uh, hill climb on my 450 here and uh, it's like unlike anything I've ever done I mean to go and take a snowmobile up that hill would be a piece of cake but I lined up on that start line I'm like oh my god what am I doing here you know, the whole It's like a, uh, a, a big, big step up uh, right out of the bottom. Um, you see for like X Games, you know, step up competition out there. So you got a, almost a like a 20 foot vertical section there. But Josh does a really good job with his um, transitions at the bottom, and I, I think we'll get right up and over it. We got longer wheelbase for the bikes, so um, yeah, I expect to go right up over it.
Greg Bryan here. Big Hill Jam 2022, Faster Minis 110 Supercross. The scene has been set. Josh Hill has his own version of Brad's Hell Trap right here in his own backyard, Jack Hollow, Oregon. Trying to do all this work in this heat out here. What's going on, man? You trying to win a race? I mean, yeah, we're after this five thousand dollar purse. Free riding legend here, Eric Swan. He's come out here to compete everything that Josh had let him compete in. Now watched him hit the ramp in the best whip contest. I'm gonna tell you that's the most impressive. It's like somebody riding a snowboard. You carved all the way up that thing. What is your technique on that? That's a I hit the ramp standing up, but I hit the dirt sitting down, dude. I don't know. I just uh, just, just having fun if you knock everybody else, you know?
brought this guy. All I know, all I know is it's a toss-up between Mikey and Joseph. Like heavy, like heavy toss.
can't believe it's finally here. The new Emirates Premium Economy. Everyone's been talking about it. This is why it's worth the upgrade. It starts with your own separate check-in desk in Dubai. You get to take more hand luggage and you get to choose your favourite seat for free whenever you like. Thank you. And here it is, the new Emirates Premium Economy. Welcome drinks. Thank you. Everything feels just more luxurious. You get all this extra space and comfort. Soft leather seats, leg rests. You can really put your feet up. One day, all airlines will have seats like this. <gasps> That's the little one settled. We'll have a glass of Chandon sparkling wine, please. There's always complimentary drinks on Emirates. But on Premium Economy, there's some special wines you don't get in economy class. Cheers. You can check the list online or in the Emirates app before you fly. If you're wondering what's on the menu, well, in Premium Economy, you get generous servings of regional meals with an appetizer, dessert, and there's extra snacks on longer flights. You get china tableware and silverware wrapped in linen. They give you so much. And look at the dessert. She loves the children's meals. Thankfully, on Emirates, there's so much to keep kids entertained. They've got toys and fun packs to take home, and there's loads of children's channels and games on TV. Talking of which, time to choose a movie myself. This is ICE, Emirates in-flight entertainment system. The TV is one of the largest in the skies. The pictures, great. They've got thousands of channels to choose from. You get all the best movies from around the world, your favorite TV shows, documentaries. You can even learn a new language. And there's lots of music too. No need to miss the match. Check it out. Live sports. They've got all the big tournaments. It's no wonder Emirates have won lots of awards for their entertainment. You can even create a playlist in the app before you fly and sync it to your screen. All ready to press play. Oh. And there's Wi-Fi too, if you don't feel like watching TV. What an amazing flight. The cabin crew make you feel really spoiled. It's everything you'd expect from Emirates. Go on, treat yourself. It's a little more, but so worth it. Women's Day, I've come down to the HQ of the Jaguar TCS Racing Formula E team to talk to some of the team members that are really breaking the bias when it comes to women in motorsport. Jess! Jess! Sarah! Hey Jess, you couldn't give me a lift, could you? Absolutely I can. Christina! Morning! Nice! Can I give you a lift? So as a performance engineer, what are you doing? What's part of your job now that we are not racing. We go through all of the data that we've collected through the race weekend and understand really what the car was doing and how we could help it to then to try and go faster for the next event. So Sarah, yes. commercial project manager. My job entails like two parts, long-term planning for the team and then the other part is the short-term planning. I develop like these, these applications and tools that simulate data. So Jess, Event management. So it varies from starting right at that season launch all the way through to everything we do at races. How did you end up doing what you do? I definitely always knew. So I think maybe it was because I liked attending events as a teenager. I was like, I know, I'm gonna, gonna do a degree in events management. I think I'd always been attracted to a business role, but I've always wanted to go into the kind of more 
premium end of the market without a doubt. From very early on it kind of looked like something interesting to me. Um, I didn't really have any other mental or anything like this. Yeah, I didn't really uh, set out to work in motorsport, to be honest. So I did watch like Formula One on and off growing up. Uh, my grandma would always have the race the races on on the weekend. If I say to you breaking the bias, what does that mean for you? Breaking the bias, to be honest, can, comes down to how we educate children, I think. It could really help a lot if groups and companies were more diverse, right? So I think increasing diversity would be incredible and encourage people to, to speak up and maybe don't think that their views are probably the weird one or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> their opinion is wrong. I mean, there's wrong. nothing wrong with being weird because I feel like weird, especially in a in a development sense, can often move things forward. I do actually think you gain confidence by just feeling that you know your topic and I would stress to any woman out there, decide what discipline you want to be in and go learn it. Automotive, I think honestly I didn't realise how male dominated it was until I came into it but it didn't intimidate me. I've been really privileged in my role that I've never felt that. As I say, events were actually a more female dominated team but it's not on purpose and we definitely would have male or female colleagues. So I think the balance can only improve. You have been an amazing passenger. Appreciate the lift. Bye. Awesome. <laughs> have a good rest of the day. See you soon. See you later. Bye, yes. July 26, 1948. President Harry Truman signs an executive order to effectively end racial segregation in the U.S. military. It happens a year after Truman signs the National Security Act, which creates the Defense Department and the CIA. 1953. Fidel Castro leads a group of rebels in a failed attack on the Moncada army barracks in eastern Cuba. More than five years later, Castro ousts Fulgencio Batista from power and begins his own decades-long rule in Havana. 1952. Eva Perón, Argentina's charismatic first lady, also known as Evita, dies of cancer in Buenos Aires. She was 33. 1856. Playwright George Bernard Shaw is born in Dublin, Ireland. Shaw's work Pygmalion served as the basis for the Broadway musical My Fair Lady. And 1948. Mick Jagger, frontman of the rock band The Rolling Stones, is born in Dartford, England. Today in History, July 26th. Sandy Cozell, The Associated Press. Welcome back in our studio and in today's news, 